Welcome to Premier Scene, I'm Claire Bueno and we're here for the premiere of The Wildest Dream in aid of the National AIDS Trust and in memory of Natasha Richardson. George Mallory dreamed of being the first man to climb Everest. He and his fellow climber were last seen 800 feet below the summit. They were never seen alive again. Just a, an incredibly constructed documentary, I mean, can you, can you explain to the audience more about it for us? Yeah, um, I mean, to me, Mallory is a fascinating character who, who went on a journey, you know, in 1924, in a different age than we're in now, and had a dream to climb the highest mountain in the world. There's nothing like that today. Uh, and that's what really, you know, sort of why I'm interested in Mallory. But then, of course, he disappears, which becomes a mystery. And then added to that, you've got the man who finds the body, much so many years later in 99, Conrad Anker wants to go back and kind of complete in his mind what happened. So you've got these two parallel stories really going on in the film. And I felt that the Conrad story of Conrad Anker going back and being so emotionally involved and trying to find out would got to give us an insight into Mallory's story because I didn't want to sort of it to be just a period mountain climbing movie. And I think it is quite an emotional uh, and very emotional story. I know what it's like to be the wife of a climber who doesn't come home. My dear one, I will be thinking of you as you set off for the summit. You've got the love story, obviously, of, of Mallory and his love for the mountain, but also his wife, Ruth. Mm. And within that, you, you've got these love letters that are intertwined throughout the documentary as well, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I think th th that's what we try to do with the film, which is a little bit different, is that a lot of people might have made it as a mountain climbing story. We, we really didn't, and I think some people have said it's a mixture between Chariot Safari and Touching the Void. I think that's probably true. I think it's got elements of both. Um, but I really wanted to make it as a sort of a, you know, multi-dimensional story because if, if it's a film that's going to play around the world, which is now starting to, and, and really get to a much bigger audience, which I wanted it to, it really had to have those sort of dynamics. And it does, have, it has everything. I mean, this story has everything. And in a funny sort of way, did it solve the mystery? Probably not, because we'll never know. But that makes it even more interesting, not less interesting to yeah, me no, anyway. Definitely. And, and also, logistically, what was it like for you as a filmmaker? Did you have a, a specialist camera crew um, filming yeah, no, on the mountain? It was very, very complicated. I had five cameras, uh, you know, three camera units. I mean, it was very complicated because you have to keep being ahead to shoot because people are climbing and get behind and then do the wide shots. It's, it's a very complicated thing and I'd never experienced anything like it and I'd never even climbed before I started the film. But I certainly learned to climb because I realised if I didn't I wasn't going to get very good shots. So um, it was very complicated. And then we did a little bit of finishing off on Mont Blanc with close-ups and things that we couldn't do on Everest. But, but it, you know, it, it, it's an all-encompassing film because you get emotionally involved. There aren't many films where you go and do the journey, or most of the journey, that the person you're making a film about, especially not climbing Mount Everest. So you get, you know, we were all very emotionally charged by the story. This is George Mallory. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm gonna have this chance to go back and see what it was like for Mallory to try climbing Everest in 1924. First time I've ever uh, graced the red carpet. And, and you're the star of it, or one of the stars. Yes, well, unfortunately, I didn't get to walk down the red carpet, but it was a little bit more fun abseiling onto it. And uh, how did you get involved with Conrad in the beginning? I first met Conrad uh, in 1998 in Yosemite. Um, it was my first trip to the world's best rock climbing area. Uh, and within moments of meeting Conrad, he very kindly offered to lend me a bunch of the specialist equipment required for, for climbing big walls like El Capitan. Um, we went on to use his equipment, and, and I made a very major ascent of El Cap that was kind of a, a great leapfrog in my professional climbing career. So yeah, he was incredibly kind to me from the moment I met him. And then eight years later, he, he phoned me up from the States and, uh, you know, with the offer, would you like to climb Everest? Which um, obviously I, I jumped at, it didn't take me long to decide. What was that like? What was the experience like going up Everest? Well, it's a, it's a drawn out process, you know, it takes a long time, although the actual ascent uh, is, is about five days. The, the actual expedition was um, more than two months for acclimatization and, and various other things. So, you know, but really it all results, it revolves around summit day, which for us was the 14th of June, 07. And, and that was a really magical day. You, you wake up before dawn and there was this sunrise, which is indescribable. It was so beautiful with cloud inversion. And from that altitude, you can see the curvature of the earth. It's, it's a magical but hostile place. 
humans weren't meant to survive at this altitude. Suddenly, temperatures plummet to 20 below freezing. You also had the, the second step to master as well, didn't you? Because you did that free climbing. Indeed, yes. We, um, we removed the ladders from the second step, which is you know, one of the highest places in the world, 8,625 meters. And we free climbed the, uh, the said problem to, to try and get an idea of you know, whether or not Mallory and Irving could have done it and how difficult it was. And how was it for you retracing those steps of, of Mallory and Irving? Uh, it was it was a real privilege to become so intimate with the story, but also I mean it was it was difficult. <laughs> yeah, climbing in the period gear was definitely added to the challenge, um, and climbing the second step free was was obviously by far the most difficult part of the mountain. But also the fact that we were producing a movie up here. You know, this is an IMAX movie. It's not fly on the wall video camera. There's no handheld cameras. It's all big static shots, and it was a lot of work. But thankfully we had a, a world class team, and hopefully everyone will enjoy the results. <laughs> There's no dream that mustn't be dared. Well, we all have our own mountains to climb, and whatever they are, may all your wildest dreams come true. We'll see you next time. I'm Claire Bueno, signing out for Premier Scene.